So now let's look at dilations. So dilations is where we stretch the curve out. So a horizontal dilation is we'll replace x with x divided by a. I mean, you could think of it as times a constant. It's easier to think of it as divided by a constant. So we've got function x over a. Reason I do it as divided by, because then that number at the bottom tells me the factor that it's stretched by. So it's stretched horizontally by a factor of a. Now, if that a is bigger than one, the curve should become shallower. Right? Because think about it, if you've got a shape and you're pulling it out horizontally, then it's going to shallow out the side. Now, in this one, because again, it's the x values we're affecting, the domain might be altered. I say might be, because if the original domain is all real x, well, when you stretch it out, it's still going to be all real x. But if you've got a restricted domain and you stretch it out, well, then the domain's going to change. The range shouldn't be affected. The vertical dilation then, same idea, but we'll replace y with y divided by a. So y divided by a is function x, or another way of thinking about that, y is equal to some constant time function x. So that one is stretched vertically by that factor of a. And again, if a is greater than 1, it should become steeper. Imagine your shape, pulling it that way. Oh yeah, it's going to become a steeper shape. This one, again, the domain shouldn't change, but it might be the range is, is altered, again, depending on what the original range was. So let's do some simple illustrations. We'll start with a straight line. So if you had y equals x, well, y equals a half x. Well, really, that's 2y equals x. So a is a half in this case, which is less than 1. So I'm expecting, because right, a is greater than 2. Now, y equals 2x. Remember, it's x divided by a. So in this case, a would be a half, which is less than 1. So we're expecting a steeper curve. So there's y equals 2x. The straight lines, that's kind of obvious because we understand slope of straight lines, but with parabolas, it's still the same thing. There's y equals x squared. Yeah. y equals a half x squared would become a shallower. Oy, y equals a half x squared. Whereas y equals 2x squared will be a steeper one. Yes, the joys of PowerPoint. Eh? x squared plus y squared on 4 is equal to 1. Well, it's going to start with our circle. x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. But what have we done to it? y squared on 4, of course, is actually y on 2 all squared. So y on 2 is the factor, which means the factor is 2. Uh, so we've stretched vertically by a factor of 2. We're making a steeper curve. We will end up with an ellipse. Let's have a look from last year's uh, HSC. This is what they asked. They gave you this graph, and you had to sketch y equals 4 times function 2x. There's a couple of stretches happening in this one. They want you to show where the x-intercepts and that has turning points, where have they moved to. Okay, so there's our graph. We want 4 times function 2x. I suppose it doesn't really matter which dilation we do first in this one. They're both dilations. So I'm going to look at it and go, well, really, I've got y over 4 is function x over a half, just so I know what the a's are, what sort of stretching's happening here. So that means I know I've stretched horizontally. Is it right to say I've stretched it horizontally by a factor of half? So we've compacted it in, so we're halving all of these values. Therefore, that 6 would go across to 3, the 4 would go across to 2. So notice. The domain is being affected. Those values are being affected. The y values are not changing at all. Now, let's have a look at the y. The y has been stretched vertically by a factor of 4. Whee! There we go. So now the x values are staying in the same spot, but the y values are getting multiplied by a factor of 4. So minus 8 times 4 is, of course, minus 32. What about enlarging the shape? An enlargement, when you simply get a perfect replica, but the scale is bigger, is you're basically dilated by the same factor horizontally and vertically as well. So function x, y would become function x on a, y on a. The factors are both the same. It's all right. We've got the circle, x minus 1 squared, y plus 2 squared. 
it's enlarged by a factor of two. Now the center of the uh, enlargement is the origin for this. If it's somewhere else, then we've got to play around with it a bit more. But using the origin as the center of enlargement. So x minus one squared plus y plus two squared is equal to one, will become, now it's not the whole thing in parentheses, it's just the x we're replacing and just the y we're replacing. I could play around with that equation and end up with this, and then I obviously know what it is now. So it's x minus two all squared plus y minus four all squared is four. Not all transformations commute. What am I talking about with commute? If I just go back to basic operations, commute simply means the order doesn't matter. So addition and multiplication commute. Three plus four is the same as four plus three. Okay? Three times four is the same as four times three. However, subtraction and division do not commute. 3 minus 4 is not the same as 4 minus 3. 3 divided by 4 is not the same as 4 divided by 3. So that's what we're talking about when we say commute. You can do it in either order. Well, that brings us back to transformations like I was talking about before. Basically, yes, they can be, but the main exception is if you have a dilation and a translation in the same direction. Uh, you might be thinking, well, hang on, before you said it was a reflection. But a reflection is essentially a dilation by a factor of negative one. So it's a dilation and translation in the same direction. Have a look. Here's a random graph. If I was to reflect it, I've reflected in x equals zero, but then shifted it to the right. So that's what I've done. I did the reflection first, then did the shift. Oh, that's what I was just saying. So yeah, reflection is essentially the same as saying a dilation of factor negative one. But if I did it in the other order, so with this one, I've shifted it right a unit and then reflected it in the y-axis. And you can clearly see we've got, well, similar looking graphs, but they're not the same graph. They're in a different position. So the order in this case matters. Determine the equation after our parabola has been shifted up one unit, then reflected vertically. So again, the order is important x squared will become x squared plus 1, shifted up one unit. But now we're going to reflect vertically at x squared plus 1. Do you, you like that when you're trying to do a graphic and, and word or something and you, you hit reflect vertically or reflect and it does the opposite to what you think it is? Or is that just me? I always get a, oh, I think, hang on, I head around it. Okay, so we've ended up with minus x squared plus 1. So our new equation is y equals minus x squared minus one. What about if I went the other way around? Reflect it vertically, then, I think that word should say, then shift it up one unit. Okay, well now the x squared will become minus x squared, and then I'll shift it up one. Again, you see we have a different equation. One minus x squared. Okay. Well, hours of fun for the whole family.